Hello, everyone. Welcome to Borderless Conversations. My name is Mac Konnichiwa. I'm here based out in Tokyo, and I'm the CEO of Borderless Translations. Hello, Swadika. This is Elizabeth from Un Designs, and I'm based in San Diego, California. And, and uh, today we actually have a special guest with us. I interrupted Mac there. But uh, Shoko, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Shoko. Um, I'm currently going to a university in Japan. Welcome. Cool. And then so just to add some Shoko has been interning for us for about four months now. She's been doing a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's today's topic? So today's topic, well, since we have Shoko here, I want to kind of talk about education. You know, what is our, you know, education system like? What are some similarities? What are some differences? And, you know, today we kind of get an in-depth view of the Japanese education system. So are you ready, Shoko? Yes, a bit nervous, but yes. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about education. Um, so we're going to start from elementary all the way to university and maybe beyond. And so now that we have Shoko here, we get an inside view of the Japanese education system. Shoko? Okay, um, so when I was little, I used to go to an American elementary school, but um, I moved to Japan when I was in third grade. So I attended um, elementary school from third grade to sixth grade. So in Japan, there are six grades in elementary school from first grade to sixth grade. Oh, nice. So you were born in America? Yes, I was born in America and I lived there until I was nine. Oh, okay. What area? Well, oh, I lived in California, actually, hey. so very um, <laughs> close to Elizabeth, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, do you find that there was a, I mean, a, a tough or maybe just a, um, just like a, a different transition when going from American elementary school to Japanese elementary school? Um, it was pretty tough. Um, of course, the language was different and um, I had to take all the classes in Jap Japanese, so that was one of the biggest um it was that was really hard but also all the system was really different so mm. yes i'd love to talk about that okay now nice. what do you mean by the system like uh, uh is it like a different teaching style or mm -hmm. like for example in america i think there wasn't that much time where we were like sitting in our desk like studying but in japan we have like a lot of time like we have first from first period to maybe five or six period mm -hmm. and we have all like math japanese social study science and we have a lot of time like studying and um like listening to what my teacher is saying mm -hmm. so that was pretty hard at first to like sit in the <laughs> sit in my desk and studying all the time <laughs> so that was pretty different and also like the way we serve lunch and like we have cleanup time. There was a lot of difference. Oh, tell me about lunch. You know, I'm always <laughs> interested in food. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, so in Japan, we all brought. Oh, so in America, we all brought our lunch boxes mm -hmm. to um, school. But in Japan, it may um, differ in which school you go to. But my school, we had um this lunch served called the mm -hmm. kyushoku and yes. we all um, get the lunch made from the school and we all took turns um to serve the lunch and we all ate the same food and it was really um well we learned how to like serve food for others so that was mm -hmm. a really important thing i learned but sometimes it was hard to eat all the food because we have like things that we don't like and <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a hard thing for me <laughs> okay that makes sense it sounds like um the system in japan was definitely just a lot more um i would say like structured or formalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than maybe the the public schools in in the u.s or at least in california that you attended yes yes very um for like structuralized yes yes mm -hmm. 
So for Elizabeth, what kind of lunches do you remember eating in elementary school? Well, um, kind of similarly, the my my first couple of years were in the U.S. and then I went to Thailand. Um, the difference, however, is that I didn't go to a public school in Thailand, so I went mm -hmm. to a, an international school, and we had a cafeteria. But you know, you you um, it's like a lot of food courts in Thailand. You you go to the coupon counter and you exchange your money for mm -hmm. coupons and use those coupons at different things. So. Like my impression of a food court there is very different mm -hmm. than a food court in the U.S. It's not just fast food chains, and so that's what was available at, uh, for lunch in Bangkok. Whereas in the U.S., my my mother would pack me lunch. Um, there was always a cafeteria available, but it's a you know you you only did that if there was no time to get lunch or if you're mm -hmm. on schools like free meal plan or something like that and it's usually like reheated pizza like very super stale it's it's very very generic it, it's like you know here's a slice of you know reheated frozen pizza mm -hmm. and here's a box of milk or juice and here's here's an apple or a banana and that that's that's your full option um i do remember however um and this is probably more cultural like i had i had a mixed uh, a very mixed neighborhood but kids are really great at making fun of each other based on whether you have the cool lunch True. or not. Mm -hmm. So I remember, like my mother made, like gave me great food to send to school. Like she, she's the kind of person where she hates cooking, but she wanted to be very meticulous about like, oh, what is proper balanced nutrition for my kid? And so she would pack a very balanced lunchbox, but people would be like, ew, what's that food? Your food smells. Sometimes even before I've opened my lunchbox, because they assume it's not a cool lunch. It's not Lunchables or a mm -hmm. peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something that you can trade as social currency with other kids. So I think like that lunch was kind of a, a social status thing when when I was in elementary school too, but in Thailand it was like hot food, and since it was an international school, you had different counters you can go to, so the food was different every day. But you could say, I want um, rice porridge, or I mm -hmm. want you know chicken and rice, or whatever whatever hot food they had there, or I want like spaghetti, or I want you know whatever pasta dish, or I want a sandwich. You actually had a lot of options. It was pretty gourmet. I mean, just how much how much uh, coupons you were willing to pay <laughs> to to get your food. Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely have to agree on the the lunchables, right? That that brings it back. The it did feel like you know, depending on what food you brought and how viable it was to trade, it definitely made a difference in terms of your status. So right. I mean, you know, PB and J, you know, lunchables, the pizza lunchables, those were premium. <laughs> um, I never okay. really liked. Oh yeah, exactly. I never really liked the the, the sandwich ones because it was just like what Ritz crackers with like. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you eat it, you're just like, "This is what I paid for." All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, caprices. Like oh yes. Then, then you were you were like the king of like the lunchtime. And people would try to bribe you. It's like, can I have your Capri Sun? I'll give you like two of my things for your one Capri Sun. <laughs> um, yeah. um. I really agree with the um, status thing too, because um, it's not about my experience, but in when one of my friends in who was who, a Japanese friend who went to America, and we all brought our lunchbox. And in Japan, there's this um, rice ball, you know, called mm -hmm. onigiri. And we usually put like seaweed outside. So it turns like black, there's like a black rice ball. And then like my friend was like, what is that black thing you're eating? <laughs> and they were like, like I heard like he was like, he thought my, their friends thought that it was like a snowball or something. And they started to like throw it. And I was so like, mad. you threw my food, you better get yeah. me a <laughs> Not my rice ball. <laughs> <laughs> Very cultural yeah. difference. <laughs> that would have started a fight in America. <laughs> a whole cafeteria is just <laughs> food fight. I had a Japanese best friend. I, I went to a K twelve school, so she was um, good friend from pretty much when I got to Thailand to when I left. 
and she always brought food like there was very very rarely where she she didn't have like a nice little bento packed but we also had snack time so she would just sit there and like it was kind of meditative she would sit there slowly lay out the seaweed and then pinch rice and then the sesame oh. seed, whatever and she would just share so that was kind of like we had a 15 minute break time and that was our snack <laughs> <laughs> Her mother eventually knew that she would share with me, so we'll give her extra the pack to bring. <laughs> oh, so much cultural differences. Like if you go to international school, that's a really good point. <laughs> nice. And then I know you mentioned Shoko that um, what was it that American schools were a bit more free. So I remember always having like recess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is that a thing in elementary school in Japan? Um, yes, um, for me, well, I had like first period to maybe like fifth period and um, between we had like 10 minutes mm-hmm. um, to like maybe, well, usually we had to like switch class rooms. So we usually use that. Um, but after the second period, we had like a recess time, like for like yeah. 15 minutes. And then during lunchtime, after lunch, we have, lunch break and we usually go outside and play oh. so yeah it's basically the same <laughs> well but but you get two breaks we we only got like well... <laughs> oh really because <laughs> <laughs> right, like, normally it's like you know whether how much of a break you got depending on how fast you ate your lunch but i guess yeah. it makes sense you have to clean up too so you you don't really have a break time during the time okay i guess that's that's fair yeah cool Nice. So then let's see. So that's elementary. Let's talk a little bit about middle school. So I feel like middle school for everyone is where you really start to grow into your personality. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, at least for American schools, that's when I got really into like Pokemon, like Mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh, all of the, it's funny that we got so into like Japanese, like animation, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, um but i'm also probably dating myself with (laughs) these comments but um but yeah i guess what was what was the hype in middle school and you know when you were in middle school um and then let's talk a little bit about i don't know trends yeah Um, choco or yep (laughs) well um for me middle school was still a bit um not so free (laughs) oh okay it became kind of more um, like the biggest characteristic of middle school is we started to wear school uniforms to Mm -hmm. school and um so we couldn't wear what we wanted to wear so that was not (laughs) really um a good point but um yes and another thing is club activities started and Mm -hmm we in japan most of the students start to we get to pick different club activities there was like um track and field or um volleyball baseball basketball um and also indoor club activities like art club or um the band or Mm -hmm. maybe chorus there's a lot of club activities and usually the students pick one and and it really and we get we have to spend a lot of time um doing that club activity because like some club activities it started from the morning morning practice from like 7 a.m and then like after school we have practice until like 6 p.m <laughs> so 7 like, a.m yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah middle school is like pretty a lot about club activities um everyone's running everyone's practicing a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) did you have any club activities or anything in middle school in middle school so i went to i didn't really go to a normal middle school i went to Mm -hmm. a fine arts school so Mm -hmm. for us it was more about um there wasn't really there was some after school activities like i really like theater so i did a lot Mm -hmm. of like improv um i was in a couple of plays Mm -hmm. um but beyond that I guess there wasn't really any sports, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I did do a lot more sports in high school, but we can talk about that uh, later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my school had a lot of options for after school activities. Um, there wasn't anything that necessarily built into the curriculum directly that wasn't already mandatory. So um, the way ours was structured was you had your sort of general classes, like everybody had English, everybody had, um, uh, at that point, like a social studies kind of class. Um, and you didn't get to pick your specific sort of field of study until further on. But um, we also all had one art class, one music class, and then one drama class. So like you, you, all of those were already mandatory. And then your PE class says in this, in the school I went to would rotate seasonally through different sports. So, you know, regardless of whether you are good or bad at something it was mandatory to participate. But, you know, for, for the folks who were really interested, you can optionally add on like after school activities and all that. And those are free. And usually, um, I would say it was more similar to like, uh, a like a staff sponsored club where if a particular teacher had a skill set they wanted to share then they would propose it to the school the school would approve and then they would be like the, the counselor or the teacher for that particular skill set so it was anything from um having martial arts class like after school or um uh to uh, I think there was like a sewing cl club or a crochet club and, and things like that too. So it was really, it was really kind of a wide, and then I, there were some people who practiced like language or whatever. So um, it wasn't so formalized into the main school curriculum, but um, I do feel that that solidified the types of crowds you hung around. Granted, like my school was small, as in it was a large population because it was from kindergarten all the way to year 13. But um, each class, each grade level probably had like 80 to maybe 100 students. So when I say like, you know, you it picked your group, but you you were always interacting with the same people. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that, yeah. that though for me is probably, um, I think that the notable difference is those were the only places where I interacted a lot with people outside my own year. Because usually it would be like you would hang out with your own year level and you'd have classes to your, your own year level, but those activities were the only ones where I would hang out with anyone from like elementary school kids to like, you know, seniors about to graduate, depending on what the activity was. That's kind of similar to Japan too, because um, so about the club activities, we pick one from when we're in the first grade uh, in middle school, and it's ideal to stay in that um club activity for the third until the third year and so I think we kind of learn like the sense of belonging during that club activity and we have to it was really strange because we have to be really polite to the seniors we use like kegel polite words to the seniors and we have to call them senpai as like as in seniors <laughs> like Max Senpai or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> so and so I guess we learn how to like thrive in the hierarchical society in Japan in those days. <laughs> you learned your social place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how you should roll in that kind. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely interesting because I guess for me it was middle school was just really about finding your lane right and finding your ways to kind of express yourself so you're like oh i have to try everything and mm -hmm. i feel like because i went to a fine art school because i had to do like modern dance i had to do mm -hmm. art both like painting and digital art um i did choir i did mm -hmm. um what else did i do i feel like i did uh, like a lot of things but only like one or two things really stuck with me um and then i feel like when it comes to japan it really is like you said okay now in elementary school you had your freedom you're good but now you know you this is the system <laughs> <laughs> i mean you were talking a little bit about trends mac i mean now mm -hmm. now i'm like i don't I don't even remember. I mean, I know that like trading different Pokemon cards was popular among some kids at my school, but 
I can't honestly remember what was trendy at that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, I do remember that was that was a period where, well, I feel like um, like nowadays, I think a lot of people are more into like K-pop than whatever. Yeah. But at yeah. that time, at that time, like J-pop, J-rock were like super, super, super popular, mm-hmm. um, and so it was like. Um, I think like Ayumi had become really popular. Yumi, yeah. mm-hmm. And people were like, um, people who were into like J-Rock was like Lark on the and, and <laughs> But then like, that's also just before the, the like explosion of like the mega girl groups. Cause at that time you had these like seven or 15 girl mega groups that were like super poppy. And it's almost like, um, mm-hmm. Kind of like a pop factory type thing because i a felt pop like factory. So i felt like every year there was a new major girl group that came out and it was a competition to like who can stay relevant because <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. one of my friends was like really really into like amuro nami and and mm-hmm. other people were like oh she's so old already and i was like she's 26 <laughs> what do you mean she's so old but she had been singing since she was 15. so they were saying like she's not relevant because she's she's been doing it for too long and she's not new anymore <laughs> so that was that was kind of an interesting thing um in thailand there was two major music labels and so um they they were kind of similar idea like they were like the the equivalent of today's like idol factories type of thing like they would pick up some some teenage kid who was like vaguely attractive and be like oh we can groom them into a certain look and type and so it was like RS Star and GMM Grammy were the two main like labels. And then um, artists who would come out of that and people people would follow them. And it got to be a camp. It's like, you know, it's like DC versus Mar- Marvel, except it was like RS versus GMM Grammy. And I was just like, I don't, I don't understand. Like each, I might like one artist and not another one, or I might not like them at all because they all sound the same. But you know, that I feel like that was, that was what we were into. And I think like, People were just starting to download MP3s. I feel like ah uh, yes, so Lime was, Wire, right or Napster at that time. Ah Napster, okay, that brings me back. Yeah, so so people were like, I can get free music. We, we weren't really talking about pirating or anything at the time. So it was like, oh, I've discovered all of this new world on the of music that the internet has has provided to me for free, and that's what we were doing in middle school. That and um secretly chatting on icq because my parents did not like me going online and chatting with strangers but i felt so cool having my own online anonymous <laughs> yeah oh. that was my middle school year. <laughs> 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 i feel that like i'm so dating myself so i'm trying to references and some people will be like I <laughs> napster <laughs> it's, it's okay i i understand i, I the show was like what are these <laughs> these, these ancient technologies <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well about trends maybe that's more in um high school for me <laughs> <laughs> so maybe yeah i'll like talk about that in high school <laughs> okay yeah we can enter high school yeah let's um so trends in high school um, tell us a little bit about what's going on so in high school we got like more freedom we mm-hmm. usually um well we can go out and like after school we go out and like have lunch or uh, have dinner somewhere near um there was like a shopping center we go there and there was this culture called jk culture um, JK, JK, oh i know <laughs> jk stands for um joshi kose that means um well, Japanese girl, Japanese high school girls, JK culture is a very <laughs> popular thing, and we also call it um, Hana no Seventeen. It means like the most shining, blooming age is the seventeen. We're having so much fun. <laughs> well, especially for um, Japanese high school girls, um, we have we kind of rearrange our um, school uniform like cutting our skirts a little bit shorter and like wearing different Rebellion. like ribbons and <laughs> putting our hair up and personalizing um, it a little bit yeah, yeah. personalizing <laughs> and then like there's this um photo photo taking machine called Purikura. Yep. 
yeah, we take those and、um, yeah, we did so much crazy things in,、um, <laughs> during high school. And I guess、um, it was like, yeah, it was super fun. But yeah, if I think about it today, it was like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's the same for everybody. You're like, man, back then it was great. And you think about it, it's like, I can never bring this up ever again. <laughs> you were talking about it. Was like, I think the sticker photo booth thing that was super popular in Thailand probably came because we have,、um, especially in Bangkok, we have a lot of Jap- Japanese expats.、Mm-hmm. And so, like, a lot of the trends that were popular in Japan at the time came to. Um, Bangkok. I mean, maybe it came to Bangkok like two years later, I feel like, but still. And I remember like I saved so much pocket money to take those photos because、mm-hmm. it's like you had to collect like photos with friends and you had these mini albums to like. Yes. Photo, like, trade, you were trading photos like trading cards. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, oh, hey, did you see this one? Oh, that's very cute. I want one of those. Oh, here, here's one. And so you, you take like strips of photos, but like, If you think about it, if you're going out with your friends after school and every weekend,、mm-hmm. and every time you're going out, or maybe like every other time you're going out, you're taking photos, it's a lot of money after a while.、Yeah. You're just <laughs> taking these photos. And I can't even remember where I kept them now, but like it's a little strange if you think about it. I'm like, oh, look, I have a bunch of photos of 16 year old kids. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective, do you get like photos from people you completely don't know, or yeah. yes? <laughs> well, that's the fun, not, it's not like it's trading, like, right? Not necessarily, it's like, oh, here's here's my friend's photo, but、mm-hmm. it's like sometimes you're just trading photos with your friends, and I we don't always know everyone's friends, so eventually、mm-hmm. you wind up with like, here's a group photo, like, there's four girls, and I know one of them, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll look back at an album and I'm like. I think I went to school, school with this person, but I don't know who it is. <laughs>、yeah. yeah. That's so weird. But it's just funny. I feel, like, I feel like that was, there was something similar to that in the US too, though, because like we would get like those little wallet photos, like、mm-hmm. for, for like, Not just not just like your your prom or your formal, but like even just like, oh, we, we went and took a wallet photo at the mall, and like you're you're giving your friends your wallet photos. The same like generic backdrop and like. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, I usually.、Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I was just gonna、I、say,、bet. I usually got those at the like at prom or toward、mm-hmm. the end of like graduation where people are like, oh, you know, I'll like, I mean, there's also the yearbook, but people also gave like wallet size photos with like their signature on it. Yeah. So there's no prom in Japan. So I'd love to like hear about the prom. <laughs> How was、people、prom? I'm planning the whole year for it. Yeah. <laughs> prom. Let's, I mean, for me, it was,、um, it was, I guess, in, For prom, usually it's I think it's only like 11th and 12th graders, right, Elizabeth? Yeah, unless unless one of them invited someone. It's like,、okay. oh no, a senior's dating like a sophomore. <laughs> so they invite、mm-hmm. their sophomore like girlfriend, boyfriend to, to prom or something like that.、Mm-hmm. Yep.、Yeah. So it's, I guess I don't want to say invite only, but yeah, it's usually only for 12th and 11th. But of course, you can invite someone from the lower grades, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, The, I guess one of the big things before prom is how can I describe it? It's like, okay, so the process is, of course, you have to scope out like your date a few, you know, a few months like out, right? <laughs> Because you do not want to, you know, you don't want to be, I mean, of course, you know, you can go with your friends. It's completely okay to go with your friends. A lot of people do that.、Um, but, you know, you know, you gotta try to get a date at least. <laughs> Then you're scouting, right? And then after you scout, Then there's a thing called the Grand March. And so the、mm-hmm. Grand March is where everyone, you know, wears their best dress, they、mm-hmm. meet up at school, and then they, it's kind of like a fashion show for prom. Is it on the day of prom? I think、oh, it's no, no, the no. day before. Yeah. I don't think it's the same day. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and these, these kind of habits are a little bit different around different parts of the country.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But it's, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a, it's a show off all the folks kind of deal. I do, I do think that it was funny because、um, some people made really elaborate, like, I, like junior and senior year, 
I had come back to the U.S. and that was a little bit strange for me. So like for me, it was just like, oh, okay, I got asked to prom. Like it wasn't a like, oh, who am I gonna like? I, I didn't quite understand the culture of like planning for all this, but some the some of the ways I think people asked each other to prom felt almost like more elaborate than marriage proposals. <laughs> Like, it's true. It's, it's, so, it's such a big deal, and I, I didn't understand it because, like in in Thailand, we had kind of like obligatory school dances, and some of them were more formal, um, like end of year. But like our school dances were like you know a committee of students and a teacher got together and supervised decorating our gym, and then we got together and like there were still certain rules in place. Like the only reason we went to the school dances because it was exciting to hang out with each other, not in uniform. <laughs> and then, like, we had a formal at the end of the year at the international school, and sometimes it would be really nice. It'd be like, oh, here's a local hotel or whatever, and we'd get. Mm -hmm. But like, Thai formal looks very different than like American formal. So like, I feel like American, especially like at school level, like Thai formal, where um, whether you were um, whether you were still in school or as an adult, generally is kind of similar in style. Like it is. It is the same kind of formal wear, and it's it's a little bit more conservative, and it's what you would wear out if you were going to, whether it's prom, a banquet, a gala, you know, it's it's the same type of formal wear. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, in the U.S., I think it can range from like incredibly sexy to incredibly cheesy. Yes. <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. and especially especially at the school level, a lot of times it was incredibly cheesy. I'm like, that's a prom dress. That is a rented prom tux. Like. It will not fit in in any venue except for winter formal or prom. Like that's it. Like no one would ever wear a poofy floral whatever thing ever again except for prom and and some of the colors and whatever. Like it's a very occasion specific thing, and you know it's like oh, all of these boys went to the same store to rent their tops. <laughs> Like it's it's very I feel like it's very specific and it's almost like a style you have to go with if you went for like classy like more adult style like classic elegance you might mm -hmm. even be considered like underdressed for prom because mm -hmm. it wasn't statement enough I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah you got to show out right it's the last party of the year it, you could never see these people again so it's uh you know you got to go out with a bang right. So it's in the very end of the semester or something? It's the end yeah, of the it, year. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. end of the year. Uh -huh. So it's like very much like it's senior prom. And so juniors might be invited, but like it's, it is the, the last party of all these students and then they mm -hmm. go to college or wherever else. Yeah. I've only seen it in like movies, <laughs> Western movies. And <laughs> <laughs> it usually it's like really um, over made it big right <laughs> i mean it is it is right yeah so but yeah it's the last party of the year mm -hmm. and then you know then it's time to kind of say your goodbyes and then Aww. you know because i think it it's in may usually and then we have our graduations in june mm -hmm. yeah is it only in high school no mm -hmm. not in university there i don't there's no i think it depends but i don't there's no formal proms in university mm -hmm. um there might be like people might have like a winter formal depending on but it's like club based it's not hosted by the school so yeah. especially if you're in one of the very well-known sororities or fraternities like a, a nationwide or even a worldwide organization then they might have a thing of like you know they have their yearly chapter house like mm -hmm. you know uh, or whatever where you know it is and the older those organizations are, the more ritual and expectation surrounds it. So like, you know, the, the newer slash smaller slash less formalized like um, sororities, fraternities might just be like end of year party or, you know, midterm party. Whereas like the very, very formal ones, it's like, no, we've, our house has been decked out to whatever mm -hmm. and there's entrance <laughs> procedures and assigned seats and you know you take your table cards and whatever else so it's very mm -hmm. it's very different but it's 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 club based and club rules so and some might not have any at all so mm -hmm. yep. actually i like let's kind of go back to talking about like um high school a little bit so i'm not sure how it is in japan and how formalized it is mm -hmm. um i know like in some countries 
you know, I, like in U.S., it's um, where you go to school is very much like district based. Like you live here, you go to the school, you live here, you go to the school. And very few neighborhoods allow you to kind of go to other ones unless it's a private mm-hmm. or charter type school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know like in when my mother was talking about when she was growing up in Singapore, um, what school and what class you got, got to dependent on like entrance exams. Mm-hmm. So like how I don't know how that is in Japan. Like does, does um, is it the score to determine where you go to school? Yeah, so entrance exam is a very big thing in Japan. Um, uh, and so there is middle school until there's a local middle school that everyone can go until middle school. But um, so everyone has to attend an entrance exam if they want to go to high school. Oh, so, everybody. Everybody. So from maybe from like third grade in middle school they start to study um, for the entrance exam and we can go to both like private or public school and it really depends on um, how well you do on the test and sometimes grades at your middle school um, depend um, kind of is um, 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 but it's mainly because um, how well you do on the test. So everyone like studies so much for like a year or maybe two or three years. And they go to like cram school, which is mm-hmm. like you go to a school where you learn more after school to so you can get a good score and you can do well on the entrance exam. And even um, some people take these entrance exam when they're um, graduating like elementary school they start to go to private school from middle school then they take an entrance exam and even some um, some little um, some little kids from they take entrance exam to enter elementary school (laughs) so like for some students um if they want to go to a uh, private good elementary school, they have these entrance exam. They mm-hmm. go with their parents and they have this interview. And so, uh, yeah, entrance exam is a really very, um, I think it's similar in China or in Korea maybe. And I think it's more severe there, but yes, in Japan, it's a bit competitive <laughs> to get in a high, good wow. school. <laughs> You said it's primarily about how how well they do on tests, but mm-hmm. um, I guess from the student's perspective, is it is it more about like the prestige of getting into certain schools, or is it more like oh no, I want to get into the same schools as my friends, or you know what's what's the motivation? Because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure not everybody's like I mm-hmm. want to prove I'm super smart. Like you know, there's mm-hmm. people who have different goals. Oh, um, so high school there isn't that much um it's there's this chart where there's like um how smart this school is so Ah. it's maybe maybe for like if you get in a very smart high school you have a better chance to get in a better university so maybe most people um kind of think about how smart that high school is and of course like location we usually take trains to get there so if we go to a very um, far high school that um that that might be really hard um usually um we all go from our house to our high school we don't get in the dorm or anything so location is really important and Mm -hmm. also like we talked about school uniforms (laughs) some people choose because oh that school has a really cute school uniform or like (laughs) also about if the rule is strict or not like sometimes some schools the school rules are like super strict Mm -hmm. so you can i don't want to go there (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's much loser or something (laughs) yes yeah we could we could definitely tell the difference um in thailand public schools generally Mm -hmm. have the same i mean you can still tell different schools but the the uniforms are pretty similar across public schools Mm -hmm. um so there's there's like a type of uniform when you're elementary school and there's a type of uniform when you're middle school and there's a type Mm -hmm. of uniform when you're high school and then a different type of uniform when you're in university usually Mm -hmm. it's like the shape and the length 
but um, international schools, our uniforms could vary really differently because they're all mm -hmm. private, so they can decide the, and you can always tell which, like who's from what school based on their uniform, mm -hmm. not just like the logo, but also like the shape and cut and mm -hmm. color of it. But you know, you, you were talking about modifying uniforms. Like we, we even had like idea of like, the reputation of students at whatever school it's like oh the girls at this school are super slutty because they put their <laughs> skirts up to here and then they um put a tank top that squeezes everything in and unbuttons the, the shirts down oh. to here <laughs> so like they have a reputation around their school uniform too whereas you know certain schools is like oh no their uniform is very boring and you know the principal comes with a ruler to measure your skirt yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like even even the, the culture around the prestige of your school uniform and how how much you can modify it, but mm -hmm. also things like <laughs> you can tell a certain school has money because their uniforms look fancier than another school. Mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's like extra preppy. You have a jacket with an embroidered logo. <laughs> you know. <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> I think there was actually a scandal. No, I don't know a scandal, but like it was kind of well, there's kind of a debate going on with like Japanese uniforms. And I think there was one school who had like Armani bags and it was costing the kids like, I don't know, like maybe a grand or, or more. And like, they were like, the parents can't afford this. Like, this is why do they need this? And so um, like you're saying that prestige, that status of going mm -hmm. to that particular school really plays into it. But you know, there's, there's gotta be like a limit. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. So, like, like the one benefit of a school uniform is like um so even if you don't have a lot of clothes you can have a school uniform and you can um you don't really um like get like judged be judged with um, mm -hmm. what you're wearing so i think that's a really good point about school uniform but um yeah, if we it really can um change how the school is looked by others mm -hmm. so very important thing <laughs> school uniform interesting did um do you get into more specialized tracks and fields of study in high school in japan um oh well, it really um differs from for which um high school you go to but i guess mainly there's like a curriculum you learn all the um, subjects like Japanese, um, Japanese, math, social study, science. And so there's an entrance exam for university. So there is like, you, so there's like a list of things that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, you can take the test. So it's not um, that specialized yet. I think it gets specialized from university in Japan. Yeah, I know. I know. In in my international school, um, that part of it was standardized. So because it's mm -hmm. international school, and ours uh, followed the Cambridge system, so we did our IGCSEs and IB, so international mm -hmm. baccalaureate, and, and so each of those is a two year certificate and a two year certificate. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, like um, starting in IGCSEs, you already said like yes, you have to take at least one art one science and one social science but you get to specialize your track for the two years and say i want to take you know chemistry and i want to take um uh theater drama and i want to take uh geography and and you, that becomes your thing and then you have uh, another couple free slots where you can decide if you want to take an additional subject mm -hmm. so you still have your base like your your language your foreign language your math your whatever but on top of that you can specialize which science and which mm -hmm. other track with, with the assumption that you already learned your general sciences and your general arts earlier mm -hmm. on but um the ib program is where that becomes more serious because that your your coursework goes toward your certificate at the end so it is a continuous uh, process of you pick your thing, you pick your research coursework um, at regular intervals throughout those two years. So every every semester, your stuff gets sent off to England to be graded by Cambridge, and then they send it back and they give you feedback and you refine your coursework. So it's like a two year 
your, your whole body of work is your your grade at the end of not just not just like a, an exam and that if you wanted to go to university in England that's what would actually determine where you land there and what schools might accept you um, and I think in like that was just our high school and that's that's your basics from international school system but when I came to the U.S. I found out that that translated into college credits in some situations it was the equivalent of like taking an AP class mm -hmm. and so I was like oh okay so our regular school program was an equivalent of taking it and like an extra credit for a college credit type class or one or two units okay well, I don't know <laughs> and like in the U.S. like the AP classes I feel like are, are yes. where people buy their tracks like I want to focus extra on this piece Mm, AT Sorry, class. Over you guys. <laughs> like, there's no AT classes like in Japan. So, what mm -hmm. kind of classes are there? AT classes. Uh, AP means advanced. Placement. Oh, AP. Mac, you mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, so I guess for us, the the transfer between high school and university, um, you know, the college will, you know, requires you to take certain classes right to meet certain mm -hmm. standards and then um, once you get in right then if you have classes like the AP classes where they are taught at a collegiate level mm -hmm. you can apply those credits to your to your university um, credits that way you can start with kind of like a leg up if that makes sense so if you take enough AP classes you could potentially graduate maybe one or two years earlier mm. if you, compared to if you didn't. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, so there's classes you need to take to um, try to get into that university or? No, 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 it's not oh. necessary. It's, it's oh. based on the individual. So if mm -hmm. you are like, hey, I want to get a let up, I want to get a head start, you can apply for AP classes and you can take mm -hmm. them. So there's a lot of classes that you can take or like choose from. Oh, yeah. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, the biggest thing they make a difference in, um, like the combination of your your grade point average and your standardized scores. So we don't really have um, entrance exams for university in the U.S., but like um, your standardized scores on your SATs or SAT twos and stuff like that are are the, the equivalent, but it's not for any particular, you know, it's kind of across the board. But when you have that and you combine with AP classes and that's when, you know, you can do your fancy math because um, because they're considered taught at a collegiate level, you, you're weighted out of five instead of weighted out of four. Mm -hmm. So you have these people who've taken all these AP classes. I'm like, how the heck did they graduate with a 4.8 GPA? How is that possible? It's out of four. <laughs> oh, it's good, you know. It's like they're, I they're understand. <laughs> Yeah. Here's their unweighted GPA and their weighted GPA, and you know some people are like, "Oh, I have a 4.9." I'm like, "That's that's but like you saying I have 100 and you know what <laughs> over 100 <laughs> percent." I don't. <laughs> but you know that those that those combinations will get you a leg up into so both to get into the university you want, mm -hmm. but also once you get in, you can skip some of your general education classes mm -hmm. because you already have credits to apply towards. So. You might even graduate early from university because mm -hmm. you have extra credits. Mm -hmm. Yep. 